out in the field of unicorns and parasites. When you play the game like that, the time will come when you meet the man that's met your match. So we found Ian a slide. Guys, not just a regular one. No. The Velcro one that goes around the fingers. Yeah. I, it's my style. I, it's clunky for me to hold a slide. Well, yeah, I didn't know. I had no idea this existed. And uh, we came across a part that needed a slide. I said, do you have a slide? I said, no, I have this. I put it on. At first, I'm like, a mini slide? I'm a slide poser, so that's kind of how I roll. But then I realized, like, I asked him, is, is this so you can play your chords and slide if you want to? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, well, that's a great invention. I'll even try to find the link to put in the description if you wow. want to go on yourself. Wow, you it. It's pretty good. Basically, this lesson is about oh. filling in the cracks. Yes. The spots in between. Yeah, the, uh, the uh, mortar? Is that what it's called? Yeah. Brick something laying mortar? Happens. Yeah. That's something that people do. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Basically, uh, you know, something that I was guilty of early on in my recording career, I'd want to put guitar layers on layers on layers yeah. and stuff, but then it just kind of fights. It does it's fight. Conflicting parts. And especially mixing down, you're going like, oh what, what do I do with this? What do you sacrifice? What do yeah. you keep? Right. So basically, uh, I, you know, this, so if we think of the vocals as phrases of mm -hmm. notes, which is what they are, you know, for like, it's all to catch my eye. Space. 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 Right? Space. Space. What do you do with space? You gotta fill it in. You have to. But you can't fill it in with like dominant lines. You gotta fill it in just so it keeps the ear occupied. Exactly. Yeah. And so that's why I mean, well, you know, again, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. yeah. You can have oh, really yeah. conflicting things to kind of create like a jumbled feel if that's what you're going for. That's cool. Yeah. We're going for more of a laid back vibe laid back in this vibe. song. So he's kind of following these chords. Right. And filling in with with a sly guitar part. But what happened yeah. really was we we sat down and we just played the song and you hummed mm -hmm. you hummed this part. And I said, well, what are you humming? And, and my humming was so beautiful that Ian had to pause. He's like, wait a second. Yeah, yeah. What was it that? It was angels singing. It but was. He, but he said, he's like, oh, you played that. I'm like, me? And I'm like, what? So we went and we isolated the tracks. And sure enough, it, it wasn't that I played the parts. Just I was kind of on One the, the uh, acoustic, acoustic lines. I just kind of like doodled around. And it caught his ear. So then we listened to it. And we just I just grabbed the slide and said, we should play this as a slide. And uh, let's let's try it. Yeah, you so, you want to sing? Uh, yeah, sure. OK. Two, three, four. It's all to catch my eye. Random crowd of feet. Unicorns and parasites. And when you play the game like that, your eyes are better, babe. Picking random numbers out of the hat. And then into the. And there, there it was. It sounded really good. Yeah, I think it sounds pretty cool. It fits really well together. So yeah. why don't you show them what you're doing and mm -hmm. how you're kind of following along to make it smooth like that. Well, again, uh, you know, the preface is uh, uh, Sean and I talk a lot about music theory, and we're actually going to explain this in terms of why it works in music theory, but this was an organic process. Like, sure. you hummed it, we figured it out, but this is what's happening. So the first, the first uh, chord is F sharp, yep. and I'm on an F sharp note. So it's a root for root. Yep. Okay? And then together. Then came up this, uh, you know, boom, and then went to the E, another root. So there it yeah, is. So we're so following the chords. I'm playing an F sharp to an E. And then I heard, well, we heard that. And then I heard when I was doing this, just little like, it's really just repeating those three notes a little faster. Then he goes to the B. And now this is like, to me, this is the magic of music. This is the major third yeah. right here, okay? So this is the major, it's, it's right here in the chord. You can see it's like, okay, root, major third. And so um, it just, it sounds perfect. Major thirds, if you're playing a major chord, it, they tend to um, sound great because they are the, the pinnacle note in the chord. It, it gives it its distinguishing yeah, factor. factor. Yeah, factor. Right. And then he goes down to the A, and guess what? Down to the major third of the A, C sharp. So really it's based on a root and a root and the major third and major third and I'm just filling in the spaces with the E major scale. And, and that, that line came along. But again, this was organically hummed. We're just sure. justifying why it works. You wanna do it one more time? Yeah. Or what do you have to say? Yeah, and I think it's just, just a, a broader point of learning music theory in general. Because a lot of times we, ex we use theory to explain because I think it's the best way to explain. explain yeah. But most of the time that's not how anybody thinks. I mean, some people might think in that way. In a jam, sure. like, you know, there are times where you're in a jam and you're like, well, how do I get this part? Or, and, and then your brain starts, yeah. okay, what theory, what scale? 
but the organic nature of writing a song. Yeah, like I would never think like, ooh, I'm gonna go to the third here and no. how it's gonna sound. No, it's just you're jamming around, you know, you get these sounds, your ear becomes better, and then you just go to a thing. We're just using it to explain why it works. Yeah. And kind of like just breaking it down. Root to root to third to third. And that and gives it a cool symmetry, sound. yeah. Yeah, symmetry, but it's still a separate part. Right? It is. It's not like you're just doubling. Yeah. Part. You wanna do it one more time? Sure. We'll play them out. Two, three, four. So to catch my eye. When you play the game like that, your eyes are better, babe. Picking random numbers out of the hat. You gotta play the whole thing. Play that. So it's so good. How could you not, right? That's, you know what? That's the one reason to have a slide is just to play this song. It's true. The rest it's, of it's so good. Forget our song. Yeah, forget this, like, this, this is like that's so much better. For you guys who don't know, Sean, tell me what this is. This is. Oh, my time of dying. <laughs> yes. I was waiting for you to stop. So I was. <laughs> we, I mean, the yes, thing. it's in my time of dying. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is, we. I knew we knew that, but I thought. <laughs> sorry. But the best part is. So nice. So good. So good. Sorry. It's a different song. Different song. But hey. We should fill the cracks in. Anyways, get yourself a slide. Again, I like this little one. It's, it's good, right? Oh, it's awesome. Yeah. It's I've, awesome. Nothing against the bigger glass slides, but no. they're kind of limiting. It's, I'm not a good well, multitask when well, it comes to taking, you know. The, the funny thing is, I couldn't do this part if I didn't have this slide. That's right. And so I'm wondering, like, did Jimmy Page have this slide live in concert? Because, like, unless he did this, you know, or this. I think he probably did that. We're way off subject. I don't know. Anyways, uh, until next time. <laughs>